Hello, everyone. Welcome to this open event at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina Capdevilacano, and I will be your host. And today we are here to share all about our undergraduate courses on the subject area of computer and data science and AI at the Creative Computing Institute, which, by the way, I will be referring to as CCI as well. The undergraduate courses that we will be talking about here today are the BSc in Computer Science and the BSc in Data Science and AI, which have started running for the first time in history at UAL on September this new academic year. And we're very excited to, to share with you all about it today. And not only you will hear about these exciting new courses, you'll also get to know the amazing team of academics who are leading these courses and the student journey. And you'll also have the opportunity to meet some of the current students at these two courses, which is very exciting as well. And today we'll have with us uh, Dr. Olufemi Iziak, Program Director at the Computer and Data Science Subject Area. We'll also have Evan Raskov, Senior Lecturer and Course Leader at the BSc in Computer Science. We'll also have K.L. Jevel, Senior Lecturer and Course Leader at the BSc in Data Science and AI. And we'll have the pleasure of having Keia and Latoya, who are current students at the BSc in Computer Science. And from the BSc in Data Science and AI, we'll have Asia. To give you an overview, first of all, of how the session is structured, we were, we're going to start with a presentation from Femi, who will be sharing about his expertise in the field and talking us through the vision and mission of this new set of computer science and data science and AI courses that we are teaching at the Creative Computing Institute. And right after, you'll have the chance to get to know the senior lecturers and course leaders at the courses who will be leading you on this journey when you join CCI. And we'll start with a presentation from Evan and we'll follow with KL. During this time, you'll hear about their expertise and vision of these courses that they are currently leading. And it's also a fantastic opportunity to get inspired by them and, and really touch on the potential of, of studying under their lead at CCI. And last but not least, we'll move on to the Q&A section, where we will invite the three current students, Keia, Latoya, and Asia, where we will welcome questions from the audience. We encourage you to interact with us using the chat function. And any doubts or questions that you have or that may arise during the presentation, you can use the chat and let us know. And we will do our best during this Q&A section in the end to cover all your queries. Also, if you find yourself in any other platform, maybe Twitter or LinkedIn watching this stream, please feel free to go to YouTube and interact with us on the chat. All right, before we continue and we dive deep into the content that we'll be sharing today about these courses, just a note to say that if you have difficulties following along the session, please know that the entire open event will be recorded and re-uploaded on the CCI's YouTube channel with English closed captions. So don't worry if you miss any detail, this will be stored on our channel, which you can subscribe to, by the way, um, if you're on YouTube already. And you will have to rewatch at your own pace and make sure you, that you don't miss any of the details that we'll be sharing today. So let's get this started. It's a pleasure for me to introduce you to Femi, Program Director of Computer and Data Science and AI at CCI. Let's give him a warm welcome. Hello, Femi. Welcome. Thanks, Georgina. Uh, thanks for uh, introducing me. Very good introduction. Um, so, as you know, um, my name is Dr. Lufemi Iziak. Um, I am the program director uh, for computer science and data science uh, at CCI. So, um, I've got a bit of presentation which I can share here. Uh, so, let's start. I have a PhD in computer science, uh, obviously, AI utilization of AI in solving problems and semantic web as well. Uh, I am a chartered engineer as well as a senior fellow of uh, IR Education uh, Advanced AG. Um, talking about CCI generally, uh, that's the Creative Computing Institute, which is one of the four uh, institutes we have at UAL. And the purpose of this institute precisely is to look into uh, working at the intersection of creativity and computational technologies. So we are not just looking into 
our computer technologies, we are looking into integrating our creativity and how we are going to get that to work together. Um, having said that, it means that we will need to explore technology in shaping the world and in trying to prepare the new generation of talents that we've got that includes you that I might be looking at this presentation today uh, and then make sure we shape the world. So that will mean that we're exploring computer and data science creativity or techniques uh, through these innovative courses. And then we are looking at that from the context of new knowledge and obviously research and knowledge exchange. So I've just said CCI is one of the uh, institutes, one in four institutes that we've got uh, at CCI, but we are actually based in the heart of London, which is central London. And we do have two major programs which we should actually share at this point in time. So the first thing is we have the data science and AI program based in London. So key thing we follow or uh, we look at at CCI, uh, we lay emphasis on research, on teaching and knowledge exchange. So it means that all this concept and tools that I've mentioned earlier regarding um, computer technology and creativity, we embed those two together and we use some of those techniques together to make sure we achieve what is needed for you to be able to contribute to knowledge and contribute to the entire culture, your own culture to the entire world. So at the long run, we'll be teaching you something around machine learning, concept around data science, concept around physical computing, uh, critical studies, uh, and obviously we look into computer codes and, and, and software programming and among other things. But having said that, uh, we have a social mission, which is free majorly. And the free social mission is looking into the aspect of digital inclusion, uh, diversity in technology, and obviously digital entrepreneurship. This free mission is actually laced with the structure or the delivery or the way we actually do things at CCI. And that is laced with our courses. And the two major courses we're talking about today is the BSc, uh, in computer science, as well as BSc in data science and AI. We do have the MSc as well, but the BSc is what we're actually doing or we're looking at today. So with the BSc in computer science, we do talk about things around you having to have the relevant skills that is actually required uh, in terms of algorithm and efficiency, uh, programming languages, computer ethics and computer system and cloud computing. We will be touching things around computational theory as well as computer graphics and AI and human computer interaction. I'll leave uh, Dr. Ivan Raskov to go into details around this. Uh, so these things or skills or knowledge or concept that I've just mentioned will be laced with all our units, which is what you are going to be doing over the period of three or four years, depends on your entry level. So these courses are the 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 unit is actually being tailored over a specific time of your course. So when we talk about the data science aspect and AI, uh, we will be covering the skills and knowledge around artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analysis, internet of things, deep learning, the science of data and data ethics. And obviously, like I did say with computer science uh, uh, course, uh, Dr. Kia will be looking into covering this uh, in more detail. So everything in terms of skills and knowledge that I've mentioned around this concept will be laced or are laced with this unit that you are going to be doing over the length of your course, which is usually three or four years, like I've mentioned earlier. So it means that things that you do in CCI, if you are studying computer and data science and AI, will include all the following that I've got in here. And that includes things around individual work. We are gonna be guiding you to ensure that you get the relevant knowledge to achieve uh, the skills and knowledge that you needed. Uh, but there are loads of group work. You are gonna be having lectures, practical tasks, seminar work. We do have pre-recorded lectures to get you prepared, multiple question and answer sessions, 
tutorials, and we have community engagement. So we're not limited to the classroom only. We will make sure we get you around the world as well. So there is element of fun, and there is element of you having to go out there to to in, to carry out your creativity and make sure you contribute to the world as well. Taking horse, like I normally say, from the current human hate to the next human hate. There are bookable events such as one-to-one -one support as well, which could be having a one-to-one -one tutorial with your subject tutor or one-to-one -one tutorial with your course leaders, some of them that are actually here today. Uh, we have tutorial with IT experts, we do do pastoral care, and then we do get experts from the industry as well to come into classes uh, during your study as well. So it's not going to be just one type of thing that you're going to be doing, that series of every other thing that you will need to do. So at the end of the day, you will be able to sharpen your skills. You will be able to build up things around creativity. Your creative mind will be open, well open. Uh, your, technical, your technological skills is going to be well sharpened. And then we're going to be pushing you towards you using this creativity mind and technological mind to create newer innovation. By the time you're done, you have self-sufficient skills or life skills that you can actually use anywhere to solve problems. And once you've got that, we're talking about having total autonomy and ownership of your life uh, using the relevant skills. Like I did say, you are going to be having some fun as well. It doesn't go by just reading. There is fun associated with your studying at UAL, creative computing. So some of the things we do include, like I did say, uh, public engagement and we do things around showcase uh, we have conference and we have to present our research to our students we get our student involved in research and some of these activities are things that you will be getting involved in so at the end of it all you will be provided with relevant skills uh, which are employable skills and these employable skills will include things around critical thinking uh, which is very important uh, and if you look at my slide here, we've got top 15 skills and some of them are analytical thinking and innovation. So these are things that actually require out there, problem solving skills, self-management skills and working with other people amongst other skills that you are going to build up over the next three years uh, of your studying. And these skills are employable skills and as well as it is employable skills, we go beyond employment. We will make sure that you have the relevant skills for employment and at the same time we support you with your creative mind to even create your own startup if you needed to so top fast growing jobs include ai and machine learning specialists which is one of the major courses that we are having here and if you're studying computer science you can finish with an expertise in ai or you can finish with an expertise in human computer interaction or any of any of the areas uh, or you could actually study data science and ai and become AI and machine learning specialists. So there are several other jobs around that are actually related to the skills you require on here. And that's the fastest growing job uh, in the world right now. So some of the events we do include uh, Ignite, which is actually one of our uh, one of our events or collaboration uh, with academics and, and businesses and cultural sector. Uh, so some of the skills that we've got or the new knowledge that we've created within CCI, we collaborate and make sure it comes to real world and in solving problems in the real world or comes to real life by we having to partner with several uh, companies and we try to transfer such knowledge to a knowledge transfer partnership. And this is led by Innovate UK to unite cutting edge research and business innovation in building tomorrow's technology. So how do you get in? you are able to get in through different means. So we talk about your UCAS points. So we will expect you to have appropriate level. Uh, we'll expect you to, you can have a combination of this uh, qualifications to get you in. We take you uh, the combination of maybe your higher education diploma plus studying amount of UCAS points. Uh, we have the BTEC, extended diploma, the A levels, uh, usually BBC, or BCC will take you in, depends on the level you want to get in. And we've got EU or international equivalent uh, as well. So uh, we would expect you to be free uh, to ask questions or to think about the creativity 
and think about the technology, sk technological skills that you actually require uh, to be able to get into CCI. And we will be very much happy to help uh, as much as possible. So I'm going to leave my presentation here at this point. And uh, obviously, the course leaders that we've got here will be able to go more into details around what it is here, it's what it needs for you in regards to computer science studying at UAL, as well as studying data science and AI at UAL. I'll leave it at this now, and then I give the floor back to Georgina to take it over. Thank you so much, Femi, for this presentation, super insightful presentation. Thank you so much. Lovely. So moving on, on today's open day event, the next presentation that we will have up is by Evan. I'm going to welcome Evan onto the stream. Hello, Evan. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello. How are you doing? Good to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. The floor is yours, Evan. OK, let me start my slides here. Um, so just a quick introduction. Um, I'm the course leader for BSc Computer Science. Um, I'll just say, sorry, that is me programming live. It's a bit of a side gig I do sometimes performing, uh, I don't know, techno code, I guess you could call it, techno music live using code, uh, a practice called live, live coding, which uh, some of the people at the CCI are into. We get to be C-grade rock stars, maybe D-grade rock stars sometimes. Um, but just a few things about me. Uh, I, uh, I've been teaching at UK universities for about 17 years. Uh, I've taught different subjects of design, art, and computer science. Uh, so across a lot of different subjects, creative and non-creative, <laughs> as they say. Um, I've also considered myself an artist. Um, I create sculptures like the one in this picture right here. Uh, that was something that's a bit in my research as well, which is um, 3D printing. So I work with interactive 3D printing or using 3D printing to make code. And I do that as a live performance practice as well. So a lot of my work has live performance, uh, which I find very interesting because it, get, it allows me to get into things like um, interaction, human computer interaction, and a lot of really big research topics that are very current now, you know, how we use computers effectively, uh, quickly and usefully. Previously, I worked as a developer. I've worked across the industry, basically, developer, IT manager, consultants. Uh, I've created visuals for hire, I've worked on music videos, and I've run IT shops and just done backend you know, IT things, running servers and whatnot. So I have a pretty good view across the industry. I call myself a generalist. And uh, one little random fact about me, I once worked on an automotive assembly line building minivans. So I've had some hands-on manufacturing experience as well. I've seen the other side of the computerized world. But enough about me, you're probably here to know what you'll do on BSc Computer Science. Um, to which I'll respond, what is our take on computer science? What do we think computer science is? Uh, I think we have an interesting slant on it at UAL, which is the University of the Arts, right? Not the University of the Sciences. Um, so we really focus on the creative practice and science of programming. And a lot of people say computer science is, uh, is an art. You know, it's, uh, it's not just science, but there's many scientific aspects to it. Uh, you know, in terms of mathematics, in terms of what it does and how we study it. But basically, you know, a lot of it's coding. So we're going to learn how to plan and write code effectively, especially web apps and databases. We have a very web-based slant to things because a lot of things are based on the web and a lot of things we teach for the web programming can be applied towards other walks of life, such as graphics and media. And then um, also, as you get more advanced, AI and advanced applications as well in different languages beyond the web. Uh, we're going to look at computational and critical thinking. Um, so the idea that uh, you think computationally, how we take real world problems and turn them into computable data and processes or algorithms. We're going to look at people and computers working together, uh, especially how people and computers can work together usefully and securely. You know, everyone's worried about losing their data or, you know, different issues that come with computers not being secure, or being hacked. Uh, also ethically, you know, how we can experiment, create businesses and use computers without taking advantage of people. And that involves computer interaction and also cybersecurity, which is a, a vein that runs throughout computer science. And then, and this is what I really think you come to university for. I hear people a lot say, oh, I can learn things on YouTube. I can take an online course. Um, and you can definitely learn things on online watching video. 
But what you really learn at university is how to show up every day, how to work with others, how to plan and deliver projects. And I hope that's what you really take away from this, you know, beyond the meta concepts and the critical thinking is just how do you get stuff done, work with others, and then launch your professional career in whatever it is, being an artist, developer, whatever it is that you want to do. And uh, so why study here? Well, I think we have an art school approach. We're going to look at uh, handling change. So you're going to work with others, work in the studio approach, um, be very hands-on, very iterative, make lots of things and then look critically at them. We're gonna look at handling change. So in an industry that changes incredibly often, we're gonna look at how we survive in that and how we adapt. And uh, especially new professions that appear like mushrooms, new technologies and all types of new things. And then you can be part of the broader community because UAL is a huge place. There's tons of different disciplines inside it in design interaction design fiction, art, fashion. So there's a lot of different people you can get to know and get to work with. So I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you so much, Devon, for your time and your presentation. We will talk later during mm -hmm. the Q&A. And now it's time for us to welcome Keyal, who's the course leader and senior lecturer at the BSc in data science and AI. So it's a pleasure to a warm welcome to Keyal. Hello. Yeah. Keyal. Hello. Georgiana, thank you so much for the warm welcome. And uh, I would like to get a little bit of about me before you go, before I, I go to the slides. So this is Kyle. I have like 20 plus years of experience into the highest understandable profession, which is like into teaching. Um, so I'm very happy about doing this, uh, serving a light of uh, societal stuff. Uh, so I feel like they, the students are the ones who are going to build up everything. So I'm happy that I'm into this profession. So let's go uh, into our slides. Uh, the slides would be about telling uh, about a bit of who am I and kind of work I do. But um, I've been doing for a long time, so I might not be able to say all of that into these slides, uh, but um, I'd be giving a glimpse. And if you wanted to know more details about and you wanted to collaborate, there are ways by which you can reach out to me. So basically, I'm Kyle Virjaival. So I am the course leader and the senior lecturer taking care of the BSc Data Science and AI. So and about me is the next slide. So it tells about um, uh, who am I? A kind of, I'm an academician, teacher, researcher, administrator. I've been into the assistant director roles of international relationships of how to handle international students. So I have quite an experience on that. So I'm also a kind of YouTuber who is using the platform for kind of uh, quality sharing of stuff on whatever learning I do. So, and I was, I'm also a founder uh, of a club, which is not a profit institution, uh, kind of IoT Alliance. If you want to know more details about what I really do, it's it's a kind of society with um, students and the teachers put together for kind of uh, solving real world um, problems. So we take this initiative to find out the problems which are there in and around, and then uh, do that as a kind of service. Uh, and uh, what do we get? The students also kind of become a little more professional and kind of handling projects even before they kind of graduate outside of the uh, university. So this is meant for that. Um, and then my research basically revolves around uh, the machine learning and data science, uh, but I try to bring them a bit of, bit of hardware into it. Um, so uh, so what, what I do is like bring in the internet of things and, and kind of use a kind of product development into that. Uh, basically, if you look at my education background, so I have a Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Communication and Master's of Engineering in uh, uh, Embedded Systems. My com I mean, my PhD is in kind of Internet of Things. So why am I saying this is like, this gives me a whole spectrum of looking into a very different dimension of solving a lot of problems in multidisciplinary way, which is, which is the requirement for the current era. And I've got a lot of fundings and grants, a few of it is listed. Uh, so the best thing which I would like to say is there are a lot of private uh, organizations which we get, but I had an opportunity to work with um, the government bodies as well. So this is one with the African um, 
region. So uh, from government of Rwanda, we kind of, as a team, won a project on National Council of Science and Technology. So one during COVID, the next, they got like kind of impressed with the way we did. And we submitted another one, which is like women in tech and stuff related to irrigation, um, solving uh, agriculture problems. And then one with Carnegie Mellon Africa and the road traffic stops. Uh, the another one is uh, with respect to Indian government. I was uh, IT coordinator for uh, the state level, uh, which was like National Family Health Survey, which is a kind of, if you look at Google this in the internet. Um, so it, it, it is a forum who means, who does a lot of policy decisions based on that survey. So it is as important as um, kind of making a lot of uh, policies and grants for the uh, uh, citizens of the uh, country so it is it's kind of a prestigious uh, thing to work on and then uh, the club which I said to you we were doing a lot of good stuff so we were kind of nominated for the role model technical club so if you come here we would be doing similar stuff here and kind of uh, doing something outside of the classroom as well which is which is very very important uh, these days and uh, research collaborations as I did I've been doing this for a long time around 20 years. So I have collaborations with um, um, NEC Japan, Nippon Electronic uh, Corporation, uh, Nippon Electric Corporation, and then one uh, project with uh, kind of USA. Um, we have some partnership and there was one startup with uh, Sweden, which is Weber Mobility. The, the, the very best part is like the students who graduate, right, kind of come back to us and say like, can we do something about as an alumni? So which I feel like which is very, very important and the relationship is kind of continuing for a long time. And also some with you, Australia, Rwanda, Indonesia and India. And awards and recognitions, I've got um, ACM Service Recognition Award uh, for the kind of contribution of me into the IoT field. Uh, so if you know ACM and IEEE is considered as very, very prestigious body in terms of uh, uh, computer science and electrical and electronics engineers. So this is something given by them. And then I, I'm also doing a lot of supervision of PhD students um, uh, and the master students. So I'm also a visiting professor and supervisor to, uh, this is an African Center of Excellence of IoT and African Center of Excellence at Data Science and University of Rwanda. So if you wanna know a little more about, and then you wanted to have a kind of interaction, uh, please feel free to kind of uh, get in touch with my name and you can browse a bit about it and you get details. And uh, this is what uh, a kind of glimpse, uh, picture speaks um, a lot. So if you look at data, data is all about how do you represent and visualize, right? So I just thought like I could share something about it. So this was something uh, I, as a not-to-profit uh, stuff, uh, which we kind of teach to underprivileged students uh, whenever we have time. So it is not me, it is uh, along with my students, we go there and kind of train. Uh, so these two were uh, that, and this was uh, the team which was kind of there, and it's the, the IoT Alliance Club. It's still running. It's there for eight plus years, and, and if you come, we could kind of enlarge that into a bigger spectrum. And this is something on the uh, XRDs. Uh, you can just learn um, the way I've contributed and kind of um, uh, share your thoughts on that. And this is one project with Samsung. Because as as uh, uh, Femi, Ivan, and Georgina was saying, we have a lot of industrial relationships, right? So we take care that we collaborate with a lot of companies. Um, so this was one uh, given as appreciation for um, the project which we did together. I always feel like a teamwork makes a lot of successful points. So this was, again, a, a project which was done along with the students. And this is uh, hardware stuff. I always feel like getting things, I mean, getting your hands dirty uh, very early is very good. So this was one thing on the smart home project, uh, which students were kind of working on. And then coming to the main agenda. So the whole idea of why are we here is just to kind of understand these questions, right? Why data science and AI? And what is in for you? And why at UALCCI? And okay, I've done all of this. And what should I do after that? So these are some pricking questions. So according to me, this is how I see the data science and AI world. Um, it's about anybody who has a problem, okay? So if there is any problem existing, uh, how do you solve it, right? So if, if it can be anything, it could be at a lower level or higher level. If you don't have any problem, then engineers and kind of computer science engineers and data science engineers like you and I don't have a role at all. So we always see uh, if, if there is anything which I can kind of support or help or improve. So that is where the whole idea comes. 
and if you take for that matter it is data everywhere can you can you the person who knows to mine the meaning behind the data is the richest and the wealthiest person so do you know to do that right so at ul at data science and ai we are going to inculcate that art of how to interpret in data and kind of convert them into in informations for business science insights or decision making and stuff so how do you add those intelligence so we have kind of um, developed our courses in such a way that um, you get those intelligence as well that's why it is not only data science it says artificial intelligence added to it so you would also learn about machine learning and ai techniques as how to convert this data stuff raw data into some very very meaningful stuff so um so at the end where are you kind of going to be recruited everybody needs you be it any field whether it is automobile or whether be it is telecommunication industry every domain is data so wherever there is data you have a job opportunity there so you'll be well wanted everywhere and what is in for you so the first uh, i mean according to me i always feel like there are there are different Uh, points everybody would look for but in my uh, perspective i felt like if you could have try the data science in ai it is something like you're kind of specializing very early even in your undergraduate and um, you're kind of going to learn about data science in ai so you can start and uh, kind of specialize it on it very early the second thing is you are after your undergraduate you have lot of pathways already ready so if you want to work you can directly go because you already ha- already have a specialization on data science and ai and then you can go for higher education if you want or like after that after you pursue a higher education either switch over back to work or go to the phd so all these possibilities are right there before you and the another another important thing is you're already industry ready because you you have the sufficient skills to kind of get in the data understand it and how to work out and we'll also have a lot of industry partners coming in and kind of teaching you so thereby you have some networking stuff and you're already industry ready and uh, you have a place at any domain you want and you have a role to play be it data scientist data engineer data analyst name it every everywhere you can just attach a data to it and kind of there's a, there's a designation coming up these days so this is a very important slide Uh, if you look at how people or business people decide on their next fight trajectory so they always go for gartner kind of predictions so if you look at this prediction on the high and the very high levels it's all about data driven stocks the job market is about it so uh, all all those uh, bigger blue dots which are there tells about the importance of data into the uh, coming up future and why at ual i want to put it at a very very um, kind of from the heart uh, speaking out so i always feel like i want to get the best um whatever i look for so you get pizzas everywhere but why am i going for domino's pizza and pizza hut right so there is something which makes me go there and i can have coffee everywhere but why do i go to starbucks so i always feel that right things from right place and right people makes it premium so uh we oh, we i'm in kind of i i kind of promise you we can kind of promise you that this would be your best place because you will have your arts and the science put together creative stuff and this is very unique at ual cci so you should definitely kind of um, um look for it and and this this there's a lot of creative stuff going to you're going to get it very early and as i said you'll have a right balance between computing for creatives and computing for arts which is kind of very rare combination which people are kind of offering and this is kind of um learnings which you would have year wise how this is framed is year 0 1 2 and 3 um so uh, so you you can either have your four year combination or three year which starts from year 1 to year 3 but it will be like kind of uh, interweaving or um, or kind of overlapping because once you learn your year 0 there will be some of it which comes to the year 1 and you build on it and at year 1 you learn something new then you improvise that on the year 2 and add something new and then improvise so this is the whole methodology which we have got to kind of design this curriculum so if you look at it and year 0 year 1 irrespective of which field you come from you might come from various different backgrounds that's what we say that it's a uh, unique selling point at ulcci so your mathematics and statistics we already we, we take it that you come to the right level before we put you into the mainstream um uh, which about this discipline you come from and then we add up the necessary tools and skills like your programming skills 
you might not have anything with respect to the programming skills don't worry we all we have framed the curriculum and syllabi in such a way that there are a lot of rich courses there's individual tutoring and all that so you, we'll take it that you come to that level and then in year 1 and year 2 we'll also have this data and uh, ai talking in terms of people governance and society at the end of the day whatever you do you have to do something for the country for improvement of the society right so we put it into that dimension as well and then um you have uh, projects uh, once you have all these skills you will put all of that together and create projects and then uh, towards your year 3 we will give you parts you could either kind of um, there will be a kind of research entrepreneurship um and kind of um, various other pathways given to you uh, and you you will know all of it and then you can decide which do you like and take your uh, take your path forward and this is a kind of course slide uh, which is kind of detailed uh, maybe you can look at the uh, website on this um, i i'm not going to go detail the way i blocked it uh, in my previous slide is what kind of detailed here so you can just go through what kind of subjects we have and how is that um, kind of influential in framing your uh, prospective outcomes and this is the very important question what after right so all of us have some goals and kind of things to achieve so according to me the first thing you get is ultimate freedom according to me this is the highest one can think of uh, doing whatever i like it, and i have a lot of um, freedom to kind of choose from so once you finish this course either you can take up your higher education your post graduation or you can directly go to the research path because you've got the specialization on the ds and ai stuff you can start your own job like many of our students have already started it you can do a startup and then kind of explore or you can go for a salary job because there is a huge market open and you're already industry ready so this is something which i wanted to give it to you so final points in nutshell early specialization your market ready and ultimate freedom and thank you so much and uh, i'll get back to you when we have a kind of q and a and uh, good luck Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kia, for your time and your thorough Thank presentation. You. It was great to hear from you. All right. So, as Kia mentioned, it's time for us to move on to the question and answer panel discussion, and we'll have around twenty minutes to answer questions from the audience. So, if there's anyone here watching right now, if you have any burning questions about the institute the courses that we're talking about here if you want to find out more about something specific about the student experience this is your chance to send us a message on the chat and share with you any doubts or questions that you might have so now i would like to invite all the academics that have shared with us so far and also the three students that have joined us for this session today asia latoya and keya i'm going to be adding everyone here once again Hello everyone. Mm, great to have you all here. Thank you so much for making the time to be here today. Lovely. So, I would like to start before we start tackling specific questions that might come through from the audience or frequently asked questions that we tend to cover in these open events. I would like to give the the space for the three students that have joined today to share a little bit who you are, what course are you studying at? and just to get to know a little bit what was the motivation behind you choosing to study at CCI and the specific course that you chose and i'm going to start with asia here so asia would you like to share with us a little bit about yourself hi everyone so um i study ba a bachelor's degree in um data science and ai so this is my first year and i've started a week ago so um I took A levels in maths, English literature, sociology, and the EPQ. They're not the most straightforward subjects, but all of them are place and relevance in my degree today. And currently, we're studying three different modules. So one is in JavaScript programming, one is in maths, and one is in data visualization representation. So I chose CCI because of its approach to technology. So it's not constricted. The university itself is more open, and this is reflected in the course and the community itself. the lectures themselves are really friendly and approachable they take suggestions as well so um my in regards to myself i'm especially impartial to the topics of ethics in ai so this is probably because of the sociologist in me 
I also found the variety of projects available is also interesting and there's also the option for a placement year between second and third year in a creative environment. So this degree itself is very contemporary. Jobs that don't exist now might be mainstream by the time I graduate. So I don't particularly have a career path set out simply because who knows where AI will take us. So some of the key concepts um, students will learn on the course is programming in JavaScript and Python, data and AI ethics and governance and project, project, product management and entrepreneurial skills in a data context. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asya, for sharing with us. Great to hear from your experience. Lovely. I would like to pass on the mic to Latoya now. Latoya, do you want to share a little bit about your experience at UCI so far? Hi, my name is Latoya. I'm in first year and I'm on the computer science course. Um, I joined CCI because I really, I enjoy technology, but I also enjoy art. And I feel like CCI, UAL, it's it's an art-based uni. A lot of the courses are artistic. And I feel like this was the place to kind of get a good mix of this kind of stuff. Um, it has a massive community of art students, fine art, fashion, media and I feel like being around all these kinds of people would really get the uh, the creativity flowing and it would inspire current work and future work in computer science to not only be kind of a certain way but also creative and that sort of thing. Um, so the current modules that we are doing are interactive programming so we're learning the basics, so HTML, CSS, JavaScript, HCI, uh, human-computer interaction. So we're learning how people interact with computers, how that is actually like in our everyday lives, how, you know, that kind of works and web programming. So our current project is we're building a website interfa interface with a few kind of subsections and that's what we're doing so far. Thank you, Latoya, for sharing with us. Beautiful to have you here. Lovely. And last but not least, I would like to ask you, Kaya, to take the mic as well and share a little bit about yourself. Yes. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Kaya Data, and I am also a current computer science uh, BSE student. I have a background in mixed media, uh, mixed media arts, ICT and architecture. Uh, I'm in my first year at uh, the CCI. And when I transitioned from architecture uh, to computer science, I was worried about how my um, my past course might reflect in my current course um, but I really found that the CCI really supports you and has a great uh, complex and integrated dynamic between art and computer science and it's really lovely to be part of the community now which is as Latoya said very very large um, yeah it's really a pleasure Thank you, Kaya. Thank you for being here. Lovely. So since you already touched on something specific that I wanted to jump on and discuss about, I think we're just going to go ahead and put the, the first question that I would like to ask you. Um, and it's the following one. We can see it on the screen. And it's, what would you advise prospective students to look for when looking for courses to join? So from your lived experience, what, what do you feel you would have really liked to hear from someone who's already on the course to really like feel whether that course was for you or not? What would you advise this person? What is this something that you really value about CCI right now that you would like to share with prospective students thinking about joining us? Does anyone want to share something on this um, straight away? Who would like to go first? Um, I can say something. So, uh, 
Yeah, so if I was a prospective student and I was looking at courses, I'd, I think um, I just want someone to tell me, like, just keep in mind that a course is something you want to enjoy. It's something where you're going to have hundreds of memories. You're going to make so many friends. You're going to have to interact with the course every day, the material every day. And so you just want to make sure it's something you really you're really going to love and enjoy and cherish for the rest of your life and then throughout your career. Thank you, Keia, for your answer. Would anyone else want to add something on this? Yeah, I can also um, say something. So um, I'd say like when you're looking at different types of courses to compare, to keep a log of the different projects and th things in the course, the aspects of it and compare it with courses that you'd like and courses that you feel a bit unsure about so you can see which one that you'd be more um, pushed towards. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Asia. Thanks for sharing. Latoya, would you like to add something there as well from your experience? Yeah, definitely have a look at the modules. Like, um, I don't know if most unis do this, but usually there's like a list of all the modules you're going to be studying like have a look at them, look into them, see if this is something that you think you would enjoy when you, you know, sign up. Thank you, Latoya. Thank you so much for all your answers. Does any any of my colleagues, Evan, Femi or Kial want to add something there as well? Yeah, Kial, go ahead. Are you good? You said you're good. Okay. Yeah, I, I said I'm good. Like why I'm like very happy is like for this question more than we answering, we kept quiet because we wanted to hear from our students. Like that added a lot of spirit to it and we're happy that they did that. Yeah. Totally. Beautiful. Thanks everyone. Lovely. So we received a question from the audience from Anastasia. I'm just gonna display it on the screen so we can all see it. Anastasia is saying, what are the current approximate class sizes for both of the courses? Thank you. Who would like to answer this one? Yeah. I can take that. Perfect. Um, yeah, so computer science, I think we're looking now at about 50 a year, maybe in the future. But as of now, um, we have about 20 something in the first year. So, um, we're, you know, we're starting a little bit slower. And uh, so it's got, it's not going to be a small course, but if you look at the size of computer science courses, a lot of them are huge. You know, some are in 250 a year, 300 people a year. So we're like a very comfortable and I think a bit more intimate and friendly size. Mm, thank you, Evan. Thank you so much. Uh, would any of the students here uh, like to add anything on that front? How are you finding it with the group that you have right now in your class? What is it that you like about it being like more like a, an intimate group? Um, yeah, the environment's really friendly, really something um, you don't find everywhere. As Evan was saying, like computer science is such like a big, broad subject. You really get a lot of students in the classes usually, but with the like the 20 person class or even the 50 person class, you really get that like time to like go through the code and really look at what everything means and really get a great understanding of like what you're learning and why you're learning it and how you can use it in the future. Um, yeah, it's just a really great environment. Thank you, Kaya. Lovely to hear that. Beautiful. So again, we, we have around like 10 minutes left. So if you're watching and you have any burning question, Please take the most out of this space and um, take take the chat and, and ask us anything you would like to know. So we would like to jump straight on to other questions that we tend to receive quite often, which are more related to the application process. So would someone, I was thinking maybe one of the students here could just quickly share a little bit about how was their experience applying to the course and what was the process like? Um, it would be great to hear from you, but also if um, Femi, Evan, or Kial want to jump and share something on that front, that would be fantastic. But yeah, something along the lines of um, explaining a little bit how the application process works would be fantastic. Would, some like, would someone like to cover this one? 
I'll say one of the students and said, what, what was the process like? They applied first and then I'll, I'll just jump onto, onto that first. So any of you want to ask here, Latoya, Kia, tell yeah. us about your application process. How did you find it? Um, so I did through, I think it was UCAS. So remember, I think it was October. Was October or September. Around that time, we started writing personal statements for all the courses you want to pick. And then um, you would submit them and then fast forward to A levels, results day, you'd find out whether you got in. I did, I went through clearing um, and I sent through a bunch of emails. Uh, wrote why I wanted to do this course, etc. Basically, kind of like a redo personal statement, and checked all my information, and here I am. Thank you, Latoya, for sharing your experience. Lovely. Would someone want to add something on top of that as well? Okay. Um, so I'll just add to to that. Uh, so we make that a lot easier. So we are not restricting. Uh, a student to uh, a single uh, qualification. So we could always agree, and you could see that on my slide. So we look at the students uh, from the context of qualification first, and then uh, we look at the personal statements as well. So this actually helps us to guide a student appropriately. Uh, sometimes uh, if you've chosen a particular course that uh, we think your personal statement is not necessarily telling about that, uh, we could always call your attention to you and get more clarity. Uh, we don't. We tend to make the process of application smooth, very easy as well. So the UCAS point uh, is expected. So if you've got a hundred four UCAS point, then we will be able to take you in uh, on both courses. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you did not necessarily meet the uh, required UCAS point. Well, we look at your personal statement and then we'll look into what your scores are uh, as well as some other qualification that you might have at the same time uh, whatever qualification you've got if it's Euro european or uh, international qualification we will have to look at the equivalent so it doesn't have to be i have to i have to be a uk citizen only or i have to do the a level only uh, we do take in mature students as well depends on on any any qualification you've got so we will assess your qualifications and make sure that uh, you are definitely right to go on the course uh, and one of the good things we do here is uh, we don't assume you know it all uh, the purpose of you having to come here in a way is for you to be able to get that knowledge and skills uh, which is what we classify as our job so uh, so far your personal statement is able to tell us who you are and what you think you to go into uh we could we could actually help you as much as possible uh, and get you through the the right process so we slimline the, uh, the process uh make sure you apply on time once you make your application the admission teams get in contact as, as quickly as possible uh we would always tell you uh what's your what's uh, the cut uh point will always be uh and then if you don't meet the cut off point uh, we will always look into what you have got as well in making sure we get you in place uh, as you are. Uh... Thank you, Femi. Thank you so much for your answer. I know Evan wanted to add something there as well. Evan, would you like to go? Yeah, I, I should also mention, I'm not so sure we did mention, maybe mentioned it in, in one of the earlier presentations, but we have a year zero, which is really important. So we have a foundation year, which you can apply to. Um, and that is um, technically across data science and computer science. Um, so the students here are all are year ones. So and you can apply directly to year one and do the three year course, which is fine. You know, we get up to speed quite quickly in terms of what we um, teach people and we get people from different backgrounds. You know, you can have some technical skills, but you don't necessarily have to have done the programming. I think many of our students haven't really done any programming. But we do have the year zero where we do teach programming over a whole year. We teach um, some fundamental skills as well. We have a bit of fun. Um, I think it's a bit of a mix of a playful art foundation with a technical grounding on top of it. And it 
from again, I use the word fun a lot, but I, I've been talking to students and they seem to really enjoy it. We have a few students on there right now. And um, I think a lot of people forget that you can start with the foundation year and do a four year degree. And I, I did a four year degree uh, ages ago when I started out and I really enjoyed it. I think four years is a really good amount of time to get behind a lot of the difficult concepts that are out there. And it is fun to have a year just to kind of get going and get to know stuff before you get into the really bigger, chunkier topics, let's say. Thank you, Evan, to jump on and share about that. Yeah, you can find out more information mm. about the Year Zero on our website, so feel free to visit it and hear more about it. That's great to hear. And we just received another question from the audience, which I'm going to jump straight onto that one. We can see it on the screen now, this plate. The following question is, uh, which companies do you plan on collaborating with throughout the completion of the course and for industry placements, which have been popular with your previous students on other CCI courses? Mm -hmm. Who would like to jump on this one? Um, so just to to add that we have only just started. So both on CCI, we've got several companies uh, from Apple uh, to Google. Uh, some of our students visit uh, Apple and they display their work. Some of the things they've shown in terms of showcase, uh, we've got some of our work uh, or students' work that has actually been displayed. And they've, they've got some good uh, recommendation or uh, applause that they've, they've really done well. So that's that's one of the good things. Uh, with regards to placement, uh, there is no limitation. There is no company that you cannot apply to. So it means um, we have the placement team as well that will always guide the students and making sure uh, they look into their CVs and, and apply it properly and, and things like that. So it means that uh, any technology company uh, would always be a welcome place for you to apply. We encourage our students to to go into this. But like I did say, uh, multinational companies uh, such as even Apple and Google uh, have been a popular one that we've always had to deal with. Um, but they are not limited to that. There are several other companies, uh, industry uh, that you can actually go into uh, as well. So feel free. Thank you, Femi. Thank you so much. And thanks, Anastasia, for your questions as well. Lovely. So we are three minutes away from finalizing the session today. And I would like to wrap up with a question that I would like everyone here to answer in their own unique way. And the question is the following one. What is the CCI community like? I would love to hear your take on this one. And I'm going to start with uh, the first person that I have on my screen, Kyal. Would you like to jump on this one first? Okay. So I used to say this, um, I mean, every time I've always feel like it is like a, a family, uh, which, uh, which I feel like it's very important because there are a lot of students coming from abroad. They, they kind of leave their home, uh, just come here to kind of study and kind of improve their career. So, so the, the place is very, very friendly, very welcoming. And the very important thing which I felt here for myself is like the diversity in its real sense. Um, everybody is respected. Everybody is kind of uh, appreciated for who they are. And the uniqueness is valued like, like uh, on par. So I always feel like you can be the way you are. The only thing what people are expecting here is like you have to be technically sound and kind of supporting each other, which is very, very, uh, very, very visible here. It's not just in the theoretical statements. We live it every day. So I'm like very happy uh, that you you come to that kind of a place. And yeah, thank you. That's my opinion. Thank you, Gayal. Thank you so much. Lovely. So next one, Asya, would you like to share what is a community like at CCI? Uh, yeah, so um, there's actually a CCI Slack. So they post different events and everything that's going on and it feels really nice to be involved in things like this, especially because I'm not from like a completely techie background in terms of I don't take it for A level or anything. So being able to like see these different events and everything is like really interesting and cool. I feel like there's a lot of, um, so everyone is really supportive as well, all the lecturers, they'll listen to you and everything. So it does feel really comfortable and I don't feel like out of my comfort zone when I go to university or anything. Thanks for sharing, Asya. Lovely. So, Kia, would you like to share a bit about this one? 
Yes, um, the CCI community, it is, uh, it is loud, it is expressive, the, yeah, like um, Asia said, the CCI Slack is really useful, it's um, really the go-to place for every single thing you need, you can be in contact with absolutely everybody, um, it's really great, and the community like in the classroom is it's really comfortable laid back it's definitely a uh, no man left behind kind of culture um there's always someone to talk to there's always a friend around the corner and it's just a super amazing place to be yeah thank you Kaya. femi what is the CCI community like to you It is a, a very uh, open environment. The, the diversity is second to none. Uh, and you could, that's even obviously clear from the people that are actually here. You can see how diverse we are. So, and it's been covered by virtually what everyone says. Everyone is valued, everyone is respected. And this is a place where you feel like home. So uh, you don't even, you, you don't feel different in any way. So uh, I think uh, the London thing is also uh, a reflection of what CCI is. So uh, it's a cosmopolitan uh, kind of environment where everybody is actually being welcome. Uh, it is it is one of the best uh, places you would want to be. And uh, I think that's that's just my feeling of what CCI is. Everyone is actually welcome. Mm. Thank you, Femi. Lovely to hear that. Evan, what is the CCI community like to you? I think there's a really good bunch of people here. Um, I guess for the staff, uh, I really enjoy coming in and talking to people. I make a point to go into both the Holborn and the Peckham and Camberwell and Greencoat, all the different areas of the CCI, of which we have many, because uh, there's a lot of different people based in them. Um, they come from all over. You know, we have designers, performers, people who do sculpture. Uh, many of our administrators have PhDs as well and have a creative practice. Um, our technicians are amazing. I love, they give their own sessions now. So sometimes I go down and I just kind of eavesdrop on some of the, the um, lunchtime sessions they're doing because they're working things like computational knitting and performance as well. Um, it's, just, it's just a really good bunch. And I know the students seem to be really happy. There's always a lively lunchtime conversation. So that's really good. Um, even though UAL is a very big place, we have this whole floor in Holborn here, the third floor of our building, and um, it feels quite cozy it's kind of a fun place to hang out. And um, I know it's people are hanging out here a lot. So that's good. That's something we as course leaders try to try to get is a really good sense of community and get people knowing and working with each other. Thank you, Evan. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And last but not least, Latoya, what is the CCI community like to you? It's very unique and like and comfortable and cozy because I think because the the class is like what 20 something people it's not like your voice isn't going to get drowned out it's very much you can put your hand up you can speak you can you can feel you don't feel as anxious um it's very friendly it's very accommodating whether you're in Hoburn or you want to just go to the Campbell campus and see what they're doing in their floor it's it's very nice overall thank you Latoya well, thanks everyone for sharing your feels about CCI here, uh, given the experience you've had here at the Institute. It's been a pleasure having you here today, sharing this time with us and sharing more about the courses and your experience. Thanks everyone as well that has been watching and staying until now. Thanks for the questions as well that you sent over. Um, we made it to the end of the session now. So I would like to say that if there are any other questions or queries that haven't been covered and you would like to find out more about, our inbox is always open. So you can reach out to our email, which are our, we're going to put on the chat now, which is cci at arts.ac.uk. Please, please feel free to send us a, an email with any questions that you have about the courses, about the CCI, student experience, whatever it is. And... You know, if we got you excited, even if it's a tiny little bit about joining us here in this uh, student journey at CCI, alongside this amazing bunch of people and talented colleagues and, and students, um, then 
our mission today here is accomplished. So yes, thank you so much everyone for being here. If you want to find out more about the courses, you can visit our website as well, arts.ac.uk slash CCI. You'll find all the courses there on computer science and data science and AI amongst many others that we are currently offering. And yeah, just not to say that if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, we're always creating new content and sharing more open day events with, with the audience. So you can follow us and, um, and stay in the loop about news and events that um, are happening here at CCI. And in the meantime, we look forward to, to meeting you in real life. Thanks so much for making time for this event. Thanks to everyone, all of you. Thank you, Kayal. Thank you, Asia. Thank you, Kaya. Thank you, Femi. Thank you, Evan. And thank you, Latoya. We hope to see you all very soon. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Have a good one.